All right, what's up, everybody? Back with another edition of Everyday Hoops. Hope you guys are having a good one. Today is another episode of the Look In series, and we're talking about the Dallas Mavericks. Uh, if you haven't watched any of the first nine episodes of the Look In, go watch them. We did them about a lot of other teams that didn't make the playoffs, and this is the last non-playoff slash non-playing team um, that we're doing. The next episodes will be about playing teams that lose and stuff like that. Yeah, thank you guys for the views on the vids and the shorts recently. I really appreciate it. If you like content, consider subscribing, like, turn notifications, all stuff like that. really appreciate it. It really helps out a lot. And I don't want to waste any more of your time because there's a lot to talk about with this at Dallas Mavericks. So let's get right into it. So the Mavericks this year, very, very disappointing. They went to the conference finals last year, had a crazy playoff run where they knocked off the 64-win Phoenix Suns and seven games and bearing seven game seven and then when they get to the conference finals for the first time since their championship run back in 2011 they get swept by golden state um and then this year the big thing they lose jalen brunson in the offseason but they still have basically the same amount of team and things are expected of dallas to make the playoffs and be competitive still with luka Doncic on your roster okay so the first half of the year they're decent they're around that four to six seven range they look like they're probably gonna be in the playoffs and a lot of talk about the Mavs they need another star. They need another guy to put next to Lucas. Lucas having phenomenal, crazy season, but it's just really him out there. You know, they need another star. So they make a very bold move at the trade deadline, giving up Dorian Finney Smith, Spencer Dinwiddie, and some picks for Kyrie Irving. Um, Kyrie comes, and it's going to be another star to add next to Luka, another guy that can go get buckets and handle on his own. And then the Mavs fall apart in the second half of the season. Uh, they fall. They went from four to eleven in a span of like two or three weeks, or something like that. They finished thirty-eight and forty-four, and at the end of the season, they could, they tanked basically the end of the season. You know, they kind of threw in the towel and were like, you know what? Um, we're not. We might not have our own first-round pick, and we want our first-round pick this year if we win these games. So we're just gonna tank, and we're missing out on the play-in. Just a super crazy, drama-filled, disappointing season for the Dallas Mavericks and they got a lot of things um to try and fix here man um going into the team we got to start with Luka because Luka had a phenomenal season uh he averaged 32 points per game eight rebounds eight assists and a steal he shot 49 percent from the field 34 percent from three 74 percent from the free throw line he was Luka Doncic can't not really too much else to say he was Luka Doncic uh, there are some things you know a lot of it came out a little while ago after the season ended that a lot of people predicting that maybe if things don't go well in Dallas by the 2024 summer, um, he could maybe request a trade. Um, is that true? I'm not 100% sure. Luca already came out and said he loves it in Dallas. He likes it in Dallas, but he's a young star. He's one of the best. He's already a top 10, possibly top 5 player at 23 years old. And he wants to win. He wants to win. You tell he wants to win. Um, and as a young star like him, you know... Uh, he should be allowed to have the team to win. Of course, his style of play is very unique. You know, he kind of needs the ball in his hand. Um, he generates like 95% of the Dallas Mavericks offense, basically. Um, he's putting up 40 while also trying to distribute and get everyone else involved. It's very tough. Very tough to kind of... It's tough to... It's not tough to build a team around him, you would think. But it's still very tough because it's tough to win a championship with one with just Luka and just a bunch of dudes. You know? Like, it's very tough to win that way. Um, you see, We've seen it in the last few years, the, the kind of one guy and doing everything and a bunch of just role players. It doesn't really work out like that. Usually you need a star and you usually need two stars to win. Or a star and two other really good like maybe all star around that type of level player, and then good role players. Mavericks just had Luca, and then just dudes, and then they brought in Kyrie. So they had Luca, Kyrie, really good all star, all NBA level talent, and then just a bunch of just guys. Uh, Luca had a really good year; it was just really tough. Kyrie, he comes to Dallas, and there's a lot of things we gotta talk about with Kyrie. Um, the weird exit in Brooklyn, wanting a contract extension, Nets didn't want to offer him what he wanted so he was like all right i want to trade even though they were on their way to being a top team in the eastern conference he kind of randomly comes out of nowhere and kind of requests a trade he goes to dallas uh in those 20 games he played really good 
He averaged 27, 5, and 6 in a steal. He shot 51% from the field, 39% from three, um, 94% from the free throw line. He was super clutch. He led the league in fourth course quarter scoring. And I know a lot of people are love to put blame and put a lot of stuff on Kyrie, but this isn't really Kyrie's fault. Kyrie came in and did what he needed to do. He was the guy next to Luka that when Luka missed some time or Luka was off the court, Kyrie would come in and be the guy. He was clutch in the fourth quarter. And with Luka there, he was kind of the reliever for them, you know? So Kyrie, this is not Kyrie's fault. Uh, but now he heads into a tough decision. He goes into the free agency now and very interesting because a lot of people you know, are saying he's probably not coming back to Dallas because they lost anything. But... Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if he does go back because I don't really know what other teams that he would want to go to out there have the money that Kyrie wants unless he's willing to take a very, very, very big pay cut to get to a contending team. Um, or a sign and trade maybe happens. But him just leaving and going to like somewhere that he can compete, the options don't look great right now, you know? Of course, a lot of the teams that do have the money for Kyrie are teams that are like the Hornets or like the Rockets or something, a team that doesn't need Kyrie, the team that are trying to rebuild, and everyone on their team is like 21 years old, and Kyrie doesn't want to go there. Like Kyrie wants to win. So it's very, very weird, this Kyrie situation. We're going to see what happens. But I honestly wouldn't be too surprised if he ends up staying in Dallas. Because I think Mark Cuban is willing to pay Kyrie Irving to stay in Dallas, and I wouldn't be surprised if he's a Dallas Maverick by the start of next season. Um, after Luka and Kyrie, Christian Wood is heading free agency, and he had a decent season. He averaged 16, 7, an assist and a block. He shot 51% from the field, 37% from three. Um, came in, became their sixth man for the Dallas Mavericks. He did solid, become a, became a starter near that mid um, season because I think Dwight Powell got hurt or something happened. And um, he came in as a starter, and he looked really good. But Dallas Mavericks fans are not too fond of Christian Wood. Because near the end of the season, he kind of took a back seat. Uh, defensively, he just couldn't really. He averaged a block, but defensively, he's not really that good. And forced Jason Kidd's hand. Because Jason Kidd is a defensive kind of minded coach. And if you're not going to play D, he's not going to play you. But yeah, Dallas Maverick fans really want Christian Wood off their team. <laughs> and very interested to see what Christian Wood ends up next year. Because um, he's really good offensively. So we're going to see what happens with him. And... Um, free agency he probably won't be returning to Dallas and then after that just the role players on this team just aren't really that good you know it kind of makes sense like you look at this roster after Luca Kyrie Christian Wood was decent Tim Hardaway Jr I like Tim Hardaway Jr but we have to be re realistic he's inconsistent you know he'll have a game we put up 24 and then he'll have a game where he has seven and that's just what we're gonna get with Tim Hardaway Jr um he's a shot taker He's going to take his shots when he gets there. You know, it's, it's just a big question if he's making them or if he's not making them. That's it. Um, I really love what I saw from Josh Green. Josh Green took a huge step forward this year. Uh, he averaged 9 points, 3 rebounds, and assist. Shot 53% from the field. Shot 40% from 3. For a lot of the season, looked like their third best player. He was. His 3-point... He became actually a really good 3-point shooter, uh, which was not something he came in with. Came in more as a just athletic energy guy. And now he's a three-point shooter, solid defender. Um, of course, going to hustle, going to give the extra effort. Um, very athletic. Really love what I saw from Josh Green. Uh, Reggie Bullock uh, started the year off horrible. Uh, he kind of ended it okay. He got more into the flow of things, things went on, but still. Uh, Dwight Powell, very solid big man. I don't know about if he's a starting big man on a playoff team is the thing, but he's very solid. Maxi Kleber only played 37 games this year. He's very injured. When he was on the court, he didn't really look like himself. Uh, Davis Portans doesn't know how to play basketball anymore, I, I think. Um, JaVale McGee was very disappointing this season. He was supposed to come in and be a big help to this Mavericks team. And he only played 42 games, averaged four points and two rebounds. I really like Jane Hardy, though. Jane Harvey showed a lot. Uh, he was a second-round pick. He really fell a lot in this draft coming out of the G League Ignite. And he was a steal for Dallas down there. And especially near the end of the season, he really got it going. And he looks like he's going to be a big part of this team going forward. He only played 48 games. He averaged 8 points, 2 rebounds, and assists. He shot 43% from the field, 40% from three. He had some huge games near the end of the year. 
And he will be in the rotation next year. He should be in the rotation. He's a guy that they need. A guy that can go get the bucket on his own. Go get a bucket on his own. We need him too. And he can shoot the lights out. And then talking about Jason Kidd. Um, he was not the best this season. Last year, um, they kind of made a run and made it to the college because their defense. This year, defensively, they were horrible. Uh, especially after Dorian Finney-Smith got traded, who was their guy defensively. Defense was horrible. Uh, Jason Kidd's rotations weren't the best. Um, and we'll see what happens with him. He's probably going to be still there next year because Dallas likes Jason Kidd. But Jason Kidd's got to be a lot better as well. And this team, they have a lot. Mark Cuban and the GM and Nico Harrison and all of them, they have a lot on their plate coming into this offseason. It's a huge offseason for them. You got the Kyrie thing going on. Do you, are, are they going to invest in Kyrie Irving? And do they think Kyrie Irving is the answer? Is there a trade out there to be made? You know, especially if they get, if this pick conveys to them, do they maybe look to trade this pick and get a good um, player back? Free agency, there's no stars out there in free agency, but there's a lot of really good role players. And I feel like if you put Luka, Kyrie, and then have a bunch of really good role players that know how to play, I think that's going to be, that'll be huge. Huge for Dallas. That's really what they need. They just need a role player upgrade. Because right now their role players are very inconsistent and very like okay. But they need some depth that is actually going to contribute and be very helpful to this Maverick team. And then looking at the draft, um, they did tank at the end of the season because they want to keep their pick because of the Chris Townsport singing trade that happened a few years ago when they got him from New York. They gave away some picks and one of those picks included was this year's 2023 first round pick that is top 10 protected so if it stays in the top 10 which right now it would have it would be the they would have the 10th overall pick right now if everything played out how it's going to be which means they would keep their pick but anything lower the Knicks have it and then Dallas just is left with nothing so that's big I just said Dallas maybe because maybe think about trading in but honestly I think if I'm Dallas I would want them to draft this year uh, I feel like they don't have a lot of young talent. Besides Luka, they don't really have any young talent. A lot of their players were just kind of, are like 29, 28. They picked up in free this year, picked up in random trades. They don't really have any young, homegrown kind of talent. Well, they're home, they have homegrown talent, it's just they're not young. <laughs> so I think maybe some home, some young talent will be good. Uh, looking at who they could potentially draft. Uh, potentially a guy like Grady Dick maybe could be available. Um, depends on where they want to go. I would assume they would go to wing position. Um, because there aren't really any centers around where they're picking in the top 10. Uh, besides Vic, obviously. Um, they're in there. Taylor Hendricks potentially could be a guy. But then again, I feel like they want a guy. Well, I think Taylor Hendricks would be solid though. Defensively brings a lot. And I think Dallas really needs help on the defensive end, but if they want to go offense, Grady Dick could be available. Um, but I don't know about Bryce Sensible that much. Maybe a guy like Jet Howard uh, could potentially be a guy. Jordan Hawkins, even though that might be a little bit high for both of those guys. Uh, Keontae George, potentially. He's a bucket getter, but then again, they already, if they're going to bring Kyrie back, Luka Kyrie, I don't know where Keontae George fits in, all of that. Um, yeah, very interesting to see where they're going to go. I would assume they go with a Ford, a guy like a Grady Dick or a Taylor Hendricks. But I wouldn't be mad if they go for a guy like a Jed Howard or a Jordan Hawkins that could be a shooter out there for them. Free agency, and again, some more Ford play that could be solid. Maybe guys like guys like Harrison Barnes are going to be out there. Kyle Kuzma has a bird op has a player option. Uh, Josh Hart has a player option. Kelly Oubre will be out there. You got guys like them, and probably a better center. Nikola Vucevic is a free agent after this season, even though I probably won't be surprised if he goes back to Chicago, but maybe Dallas can try to get it out on there. Uh, Jeremy Grant will be a free agent. I think that'll be a huge, great, I don't know how much, I'm not exactly sure how much money uh, the Dallas Mavericks are have. Actually, I can check. Looking at their salaries over the next few years, Luka, of course, is going to get paid like Luka should be paid. Uh, Tim Hardaway still got 17 next year and 16 the year after devs i forgot davis where tons makes so much money he's gonna make 17 next year and he's only probably gonna put like 40k oh man yeah they gotta get rid of those two tim hardaway and davis bertans christian wood dwight powell be free agents reggie bullock still has got 10 years 10 mil mike's Kleber still has 11 mil next left for the next three years 
Um, okay, JaVale, still going to get paid five and then six. Josh Green is still on his rookie deal, so is Jane Hardy. Um, yeah, so they might have some money. But a lot of that, got to remember, going to go to Kyrie, potentially. Uh, so that knocks down a few things. But yeah, they really need to get this roster back together. They need to get this roster together. They got to go get some free agents that are solid. They don't need stars. Um, even though there is an opportunity to get one, yeah. But they need if they're going to re-sign Kyrie, they just need to get good defender. They need defense. They need some wing defenders, wing stoppers, and they need guys that are going to knock down shots. That's all they need. They don't need anybody that's going to go put up 30. They don't need any of that. They just need good role players that are going to fit their role and do their job. That's what they need. And, yeah, this is a big offseason for Mark Cuban and Nico Harrison. They got to try to figure this out because if not, Luka could be out the door pretty soon. And then everything you have, then you have nothing after that. Um, yeah, very intrigued to see what the Dallas Mavericks do this offseason. It's a very important one for them. And they got to recover from this season. Uh, thank you guys for watching. That's it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed. Once again, if you do like the content, consider subscribing, like, turn notifications, all stuff like that. I really appreciate it. Really upset a lot. And, um, yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow.